So in this video today, we are going to be looking at two isomers, Propan 1 ol and Propan 2 ol And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be able to identify the number of proton environments from the full structural formula. And from there, we are going to draw the low resolution HNMR spectra that would be expected for that particular example. So in this first example, we've got Propan 1 ol And I need you to imagine that each of the carbon atoms are houses. Now, I've got a row of houses and I've got an oxygen, which I want you to imagine to be a dungeon. Now, this is HNMR, so we're looking at the hydrogens and where they can live or where they can occupy. So what we can see is in this carbon, this can have three rooms or three hydrogens can occupy this particular house. Is there a CH3 anywhere else? Is there another house that can be bought which has three hydrogens in it? No. So this is classed as one proton environment, all right? And it has three hydrogens which can occupy that. I move along and I have a CH2. Now, we always need to look at our next door neighbours when we're buying houses. This CH2, so this house has two rooms in it where two hydrogens can occupy it. And so does this. However, this CH2 has a CH3 neighbour. Does this have a CH3 neighbour? No. So this means that this is a different proton environment which can occupy two hydrogen atoms. Next house along, we have a CH2, which is next to a CH2 and next to an OH. We don't have that anywhere else, which gives us our third proton environment. And then we have our hydrogen, which is bonded to an oxygen. We don't have that anywhere else. So that would be our fourth proton environment. And as a result, because we've got four different proton environments, we will see four different peaks in our HNMR low resolution spectra. So what we're going to do now, now that we've identified the number of proton environments and the types of proton environments that we have, we have to identify the chemical shift that each of these environments would have by using our data booklet. We're going to be using page 17 of our data booklet here. So if I'm looking at this first house, which is my pink house, which is my CH3, remember I said that we have to look at our neighbours. So when I look at this next door neighbour, I can see that it's bonded to a carbon. Now, a carbon atom is known as an alkyl group, which is represented by the letter R. This CH3 only has one neighbour, so we're looking for something that comes up and says RCH3. Now, what you can see here is that the H's, which are bonded to the carbon, are in bold. And that emphasises that that's the proton environment that we are analysing for that. So, I have to copy that down from the data booklet. So, I've got RCH3. And this was my pink house, so I'm going to highlight the hydrogens, which are in bold in the data booklet, as CH3. And the data given for the chemical shift for that proton environment is 1.5 to 0.9. What we're then going to do is we're going to plot on our spectra. So what we want to do is we want to find a number within that range. I'm going to use one because I think that's a nice, easy number for us to do. And you have to make sure that the height of your peak is proportional to the number of hydrogen atoms which can be found in that environment. So for this, I'm going to do one because one's found between 1.5 and 0 0.9. And I'm going to do it at a height of three to represent the one, two, three hydrogen atoms that are found in that environment. I then move along to what I will call my greenhouse, which is this one here. I'm looking for a CH2, which is bonded to a carbon, which is represented by R, and a carbon, which is represented by R. So when I'm reading my uh, data booklet, I'm looking for R2CH2, where the H's are bolded when they're bonded to the CH2. And again, it has the exact same chemical shift, 1.5 to 0 0.9 and because that's my greenhouse I'm going to use a green pen I'm going to highlight the hydrogens that I'm interested in this time I'm going to move it to 1.5 because it's easier for me to plot and I'm going to have to do this one at a height of two so using my green pen I'm going to do a height of two I 
again, we're looking at the next house along. For us, it's going to be looking at the blue house. If I'm looking at this CH2 here, on the left hand side, it's bonded to a C, which would be represented by R but it's also bonded to a highly electronegative element, O. So I'm going to look for something from reading from left to right, R, CH2, O. So when I work myself down, I can see at the alcohol ether that I have an R, CH2, O, where the H's, which I'm in, uh, looking at for that environment, are in bold. So we copy that down, R, CH2, O. The chemical shift for that is 3.9 to 3.5. And for me, that's the blue house. So I'm going to highlight the hydrogens, which I'm analysing. And I'm going to have to plot that spectra on here. 3.5 was easy for me to plot. So I'm going to go to 3.5, which is here. I'm going to have to do that at a height of 2. Because there are two hydrogens that are found in that environment. The last hydrogen environment that we have is the one that is bonded as part of the hydroxyl group. So I can see that the H is bonded to an O, which is bonded to an R. So if I'm reading from left to right, it should say ROH. I want to go down to the bottom of my data booklet where I can see ROH. And we can see that this has got a large chemical shift here. Okay, it's between six and one. So again, I'm going to copy that into my data booklet. ROH. I'm going to highlight that hydrogen that I'm interested in and it's between 6.0 and 1.0. For me, the 6.0 is nice and easy for me to plot and because there's only one hydrogen in it, I'm going to do it at a height of 1, like so. And this is how we would take our organic molecule, identify the number of proton environments for propan 1 and to plot them on a low resolution HNMR spectra. What we also need to always remember to do is to plot a line at zero, all right? doesn't matter the height of the line, but the reason that we have to do that is that in our data booklet, we can see that there will always be a, a line at zero parts per million, which represents the TMS. So we need to make sure that we always put that into our spectra. Let's have a go at doing propan 2 all. So, we have a CH3, which is bonded to a CH. Now, what we can see about this organic molecule is it's symmetrical. If I was to buy an end house with three rooms, it's always going to be bonded to the same neighbour who's in the middle. So, this is actually classed as one proton environment due to the symmetry of the molecule. So what we do is we combine the number of hydrogens. So that would be a total of six hydrogen atoms found in that one type of environment. We then move along. I have a CH. I don't have that anywhere else. One hydrogen can live in there. And I have my hydroxyl group, which is my OH. And I've got one hydrogen there. So what we can see with this example is... Um, that we have three proton environments and therefore we should only have three lines on our low resolution HNMR spectra. So we're now going to move on to uh, drawing the low resolution HNMR spectra. A reminder that we always have to have a line at zero which represents, represents our TMS. We're then going to use our data booklet and we're going to have to identify how we would write those proton environments using the page 17 of our higher chemistry data booklet. So what I can see here is I'm looking at a CH3 environment, which would be my pink environment, and it's only directly bonded to a C, which is represented by the letter R for an alkyl group. So I'm looking for something that says RCH3, which is this one here. So I'll write down RCH3. The chemical shift is 1.5 to 0 0.9, and I'm gonna use my pink pen, which represents my pink environment for this CH3. But what you can see here is that there are two of these environments. So I'm going to put a big two here to remind me. Now, what I have here is I'm going to plot for one, 
but I've got three times two, so I'm going to have to do a height of six. So let's go to one and go up one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's going to be a height of six. The next proton environment for me would be my greenhouse, which is this one here. Now we have to be careful. We've got three different elements that that carbon is bonded to. We've got the carbon, which is an R, another carbon, which is an R, and we've got an O. So we're looking for R2CHO. So if we go to here, we're looking at R2CHO, where the H, which is bonded to the carbon we're interested in, is found in both. So we've got R2CHO. I'm going to highlight the hydrogen that I'm interested in, the same as what I have on my proton environment. And with that, the, uh, the chemical shift is 3.9 to 3.5. If I go down, 3.5 is nice and easy for me to plot. It's going to be a height of 1 because there's only one hydrogen atom found in that environment. The last environment that we have is the OH group. The O is only bonded to an R, so we're looking for ROH, which is at the bottom of our page. It's got a range of 6 to 1. For me, that, that would be the purple house. I'm going to plot that at 6 with a height of 1. What we can see there is that as we have three proton environments, that we should have three lines on our spectra that have a specific chemical shift for the proton environment found in the organic molecule.